All of the following conditions are merely parts of the subluxation complex. What is a subluxation? It's a malfunction of a spinal joint that causes adverse changes in the function of a nerve. This begins the degenerative disc disease process and can be at the root of many other illnesses too. We begin our presentation with a picture of a relatively healthy cervical spine, that of a 30-year-old male patient. This is the age just before the loss of normal blood supply to the discs begins. As shown by the yellow line, we can see a normal healthy curve, which we call C-shaped. The discs, as shown between the blue lines, are for the most part a healthy thickness, but even this person already has the start of degenerative disease shown in the red circle, the early beginnings of a spur. In this later stage two of the degenerative process, you can see the curve as marked by the yellow line is now reversed due to spasm from the nerve irritation. And the discs are thinned with significant spur formation as demonstrated on the red circle. The range of motion of this neck is now significantly compromised and there are the beginnings of nerve changes in the shoulders, arms, and even the hands caused by the pinching of the nerve fibers at this level. In this late stage of the process, one can see that the curve, which should have been a C-shape, is lost altogether. The disc spaces are now very thin and nearly fused. As shown in the yellow circles, there are now significant spurs at every level, and as the yellow circle zooms in on a spur, we can better see the ragged appearance of one of those spurs. The patient's range of motion is now seriously compromised, and there are unpleasant changes in function in the shoulders, arms, and hands, which may include pain, cramping, and altered sensation, or pins and needles. Even the circulation to the fingers is now compromised by the reduced nerve supply. Let's take a look at a side view of a normal, healthy spinal segment. As the spine flexes forward, the discs do bulge backward toward the spinal cord. The discs are the blue areas. But the thickness of the discs allows enough room for this to happen without injuring the nerves. After age 30, we start losing the blood supply to our discs. So by age 35, on average, there's no longer any blood supply at all to that cartilage. The only way it receives nutrition is through diffusion and from the pumping mechanism of the movement of the segments. Without chiropractic care, the joints at the back, here shown to the left of the disc, known as facet or zygopophyseal joints, also begin to deteriorate and start locking up too. This starts the breakdown process for the discs and they get thinner, which is why you lose height as you age. Here you see the thinning process from normal through stages one, two, and finally three as the discs thin down. In the process, they also gain calcium deposits called spurs, which can impinge on the nerves themselves. See now from a top view as the disc goes through this breakdown process, cracks develop in the drying out cartilage called annulus fibrosis, and the jelly-like substance in the center, called nucleus pulposus, begins to ooze through the cracks. Here we see what an artist thought it would look like, sort of a photograph of a degenerated spine. What are the levels of disc injury? First there is disc bulge, then herniation, then rupture, and finally prolapse. In a bulging disc, the small joints or facets lock up, keeping the disc in a bulging state. Here, the adjustment can give nearly immediate relief. By unlocking the joints, it allows the disc to relax, as shown in this illustration. Our success rate is near perfect for new patients with bulging disc, whom we accept for treatment. The formation of a herniation, herniated disc, or what we doctors call an HNP, begins when the degenerating disc's cartilage starts cracking and the jelly in the nucleus begins to push into the cracks. Here you can see the oozing of the gelatinous nucleus pulposus into those cracks. Look at the inset at right. If, as in this illustration, the herniation forms in this direction, there are likely not going to be any symptoms because the damage is forming away from the nerves and cord. Our success rate in treating herniated nucleus pulposus cases exceeds 85% of the patients we accept for treatment. In a rupture, the nuclear jelly is pushed all the way through the annular rings, but it remains attached to the disc. 
In this extreme circumstance, a piece of the nuclear jelly has actually detached from the disc. It may wrap around a nerve root. In any case, it's a clear case for surgical intervention and chiropractic care is no longer a reasonable method of treatment. If, however, the herniation forms towards the cord or into the canal with the nerves in it, then there will be pain and it may be severe. And if it actually ruptures, there can also be damage to the nerves themselves. This could become so serious, even causing loss of bladder or bowel control, when the disc finally ruptures, as this illustration ultimately shows, that emergency decompressive surgery could be required. Short of such severe loss of nerve function, however, most cases can still be treated by a highly skilled and experienced doctor of chiropractic. Remember, only a doctor of chiropractic can tell you if chiropractic methods can help you. How do we prevent spinal degeneration? Well, there are several rules. First, get regular chiropractic adjustments. This keeps the spinal joints in motion and prevents the locking up of the vertebrae and therefore the degeneration of the discs. Avoid stress and traumatic injury. Easier said than done, of course. And then ask your doctor about proper sleeping and work positions, pillows, mattresses, and so on that can help avoid chronic buildup of stress on your spine from physical positioning. Get regular exercise, drink plenty of clean water, and generally take good care of yourself. How does the chiropractic adjustment fix the problem? By unlocking the rusty locked up joints, restoring the normal alignment of that pair of vertebrae, rehabilitating the entire spinal segment, and thereby relieving interference with the nerve's function. In the case of a bulging disc, just getting the affected joint to move can set the problem straight. Naturally, if there's degeneration too, then the procedure will have to be repeated. In any event, the joints, the facets as we've seen, may want to lock up because they may become sticky from the degenerative process. How often will you need to be treated? Well, your doctor will be able to tell you probably after a couple of adjustments. What can chiropractic do for a herniated disc? Let's look at the famous case of Alexander Julin. Alex Julin, known as Sasha, Olympic bronze medalist in Albertville, silver medalist in Lillehammer, world ice dancing champion and world professional ice dancing champion, has given his written permission for us to discuss his condition. And they are second by a very slight margin going into the free skate. 29-year-old Maya Usaga and 30-year-old Alexander Zhu. In 1998, in Madison Square Garden at New York, he injured his back lifting his partner, Miss Maya Useva. I was called in to examine him, and we determined that he had likely herniated a disc. So I took him out of the show that evening. The potential loss was very large, both financially to Julian and his partner, and to the show. But I had to tell him if he performed that night, he would be jeopardizing the rest of his career. Sasha came back to my home and the next morning had an MRI which showed not one but two herniated lumbar discs. We worked together day and night for the next three days and in just those three days we were able to shock the tour staff as Sasha was back and successfully completed all 35 more of the shows of Champions Ice. What a privilege it is to be able to help so great a champion. But how, you ask, can this get the toothpaste back into the tube? It seems that if the jelly hasn't separated from the vertebra, which is called prolapse, then restoring the alignment of the pair through manipulation can create a vacuum effect which sucks the nucleus back into the disc. Suppose the disc is ruptured. Chiropractic methods may still help you, maybe. In our experience, about 50% of such cases are still able to be helped without surgery in the hands of a highly trained, very experienced chiropractor. How do we treat you for 